Tell me how Dublin is very much like Winnipeg. Do, do you find that to be the case? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know, it's my new home, so it, 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 in a way it's like my old home. Um, I don't know, the Winnipeg's food scene's pretty great, and like Dublin's food scene's pretty great, so I see how the similarities, but it, it's it's quite different, that's what keeps it exciting, being in uh, being in a different place in the world, be, being in Europe uh, is crazy for me, because I never left Canada, or never left North America until 2016, so all of a sudden, in another year, I was living there. Do you feel more relaxed going into this fight just because you've been, you've been here, done that? You know what, there is a sense of comfort with this fight compared to the last, you know, last time everything was new. It's still exciting for me that being here in front of all, all, all you guys with this big bundle of mics is, is exciting to me. It feels, feels very right. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's similar to last time, which was a good feeling. It was nice going all fight week, just excited for every little thing I have to do. Nothing was really taking energy. It was all kind of building that fire. How much do you picture this leading into the week? Picture standing here and picture the weigh-ins. How much ahead are you looking? You know, it was probably only once I got the schedule, so last week that, that I was starting to picture things, because uh, I didn't know all what I'd be doing. Uh, last time, you know, I was one of the main features in in the finale um, and, and then it was International Fight Week so there's going to be all that buzz so I didn't know how this would compare uh, then I saw the schedule and it was pretty similar so I was happy that I have these opportunities. You fought a lot this year I mean on the Ultimate Fighter then in the summer now you're fighting again now how do you go about not getting burnt out not just from a mental standpoint but obviously physically? You know what uh, yeah, I have fought a lot this year. It's it's, it's feeling that way. It doesn't compared to the like, regional scene. I mean, it was exactly, tough getting fights before, right? Exactly. It I, it's it's nice being being active. It is certainly nice being active. Uh, for me, it was uh, after the finale fight. I decompressed for about two weeks at home, which was great, um, and that really helped kind of refuel that that mental energy and and that, I don't know that spiritual energy. Being around friends, being around family is is can kind of it just lights that fire in you. Then I went back in that, to Ireland, that was exciting, went to train, took a small break, took a small holiday, and then it was into training camp. So, you know, taking those small breaks where you can just escape everything uh, and, and then be with friends and family when you can, I think that's the key just to keep that energy high. Brad, once we used to say that there were strikers and grapplers and wrestlers, now it's kind of more types. There's athletes and fighters and nerds. And you're kind of represent fight nerds, would you say? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what, I'll take that on and adjust my glasses to it, uh, you know what, uh, I, I, I think looking at the sport very analytically and looking at yourself uh, with a critical eye is, is, is very important to me and I think it should be. Uh, you can have a coach who will do that for you, but for me, I want to take charge on everything I do. I just don't want to say, be told what to do. I want to be told why I'm doing it. That way I can reflect on it. And if it's right for me, there's there's thousands of ways of doing things, you know, and, and it's finding the right way for you, I think is important. And, you know, uh, fortunately I found a gym in SBG and a coach in, in John Kavner that's uh, just perfectly aligned with that uh, too. And we're both working together to kind of uh, streamline everything for me. When you're being analytical about yourself, you start being analytical about how you're being analytical. Do you know what I mean? Do you start going in super I, deep I, I, layers of looking at why you do things the way you do things? I try not to go too meta, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it, you, you know, looking, just, just being critical on yourself and being critical on your training, knowing that you're getting the best that you can, um, that's around you, you know, uh, I, I have a lot of great relationships now in back home in Winnipeg and, and in out and I'm just looking to keep on building those that way I can take exactly what I need when I need it. Do we feel like we're, we're gonna see, I mean you had a great performance in your debut, but do, do you feel like we'll see all the, the real Brad Katona, just the fact that you're fighting at Bantamweight for this, uh, we saw you fight at Featherweight, now you're fighting in your natural weight class. You, you know I think it's pretty hard to, for me to think I'm gonna top the last performance, but uh, in terms of all the preparation thus far, 
everything's been better. Yeah, you know, last time my conditioning was on point, and uh, this time we got lab tested and, and pushed that conditioning just that little bit more. We can squeeze that 10% more out of me, which is which is good to know. Uh, in terms of sparring partners, I, I, I've, I've been going with uh, the killers at the gym, Brian Moore, uh, Br Blaine O'Driscoll, you know, those guys have been pushing me, and that's a little harder sparring than I was getting ass camp. So everything's been kind of tweaked and, 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 and enhanced a little bit more. So, uh, you know, being down at Bannerweight, I feel just as good as I was featherweight. You know, today's not going to be quite as fun as last time, but, uh, you, you know, besides that, besides that one day, everything else is better than last. There's a story going around the gym that uh, John Cavanaugh calls you a bully. What's the story behind that? Uh, well, uh, probably looking at me, I'm not really <laughs> your stereotypical bully. <laughs> um, you, you know, these are trolling me online. Uh, well, it all started doing... Uh, I forget what interview it was. It was it, it was just a Facebook Live, and he threw it up there to kind of see how I'd react. And since then, he, any live interview I've done, he's tossed something out there. So um, even after you, he asked you. So um, <laughs> you know, it's one of those where he's throwing it out there. It keeps it fun, keeps me on my toes. I never know when all of a sudden John's name's going to pop up in an interview, and I'm going to have to answer these questions. So. For, Brad, for, Brad, over here. Um, you know, you're always having, I know you're always having to answer a lot of questions about your accent. Hopefully this is the last one. I know it has to do with speech therapy when you were younger and also people thinking maybe you spent too much time in Ireland. But what I can't remember hearing is uh, where are your parents from? Did you pick up any of that from them? Uh, you, you know, uh, my mom uh, was born in Manitoba. I don't, she moved a lot as, as, uh, as a young girl. So she's been in many parts of Manitoba, all around Winnipeg. Uh, my dad moved from Leicester, England to Winnipeg when he was eight years old, I think. Young, at least. Um, but he doesn't have an accent, you know, so it's not like I could even say, well, I picked it up from my dad. Uh, um, on his side of the family, I do have Hungarian roots, but, you know, none of that is really accent that's going to come into me. So uh, we can we can try to clear it up as much as possible, but uh, it's just a question I'm going to be answering for the rest of my career, <laughs> and, and I'm comfortable. How, how did not. you feel winning at Mario Kart yesterday? Uh, that was a pretty great feeling. Uh, you know, it, it was getting the fight nerves all over again, got my warm-up in, and then uh, went out there, and it was close, but uh, we got it. How does a thinker get his mind just exactly right, the balance of fear and anxiety and excitement when you go to fight? How, do, how does a thinker do that? I think it all comes down to your preparation. So in sparring, you should be replicating those feelings. Uh, for me, it's very important to be doing actual fight simulation sparring, so it's me, my sparring partner, in a cage with a ref, three five minute rounds, and it's go time. You're wearing fight, your fight outfit essentially. You're wearing shorts, shin pads, gloves, headgear, and uh, you know, besides the protective equipment, everything's the same as a fight. So uh, that kind of lets you find out if you should upregulate the nerves, downregulate the nerves, and exactly where that perfect balance is. So that's why I did last fight and made me go out there and what was my UFC debut and, and, and performed to my best. This is your first cut down to Bantamweight since I believe September of 2017. Uh, does, has that made it a bit more difficult just getting back down there for the first time in a while or is Lockhart and Elite making it pretty easy? Uh, you, you know, the Lockhart and Elite team are making it very easy. Um, I was potentially concerned about it, but that's why we started about nine weeks out. You know, it's not like I just went, okay, normal six week diet and, and we're going to get it. We started a long ways out. That way we could monitor and make sure everything was dropping uh, as, it, as it should. And it's looking good. You know, I'm feeling good. I still have energy to chat with you this morning. Um, later on tonight, probably the energy is going to start dropping, but that's just natural. And then we're going to be down to wait for a short little while, then break back up. So um, everything's going as planned. I, I, I feel good, and hopefully I don't look too drawn out with uh, dry lips or anything. Your Brad, girlfriend is your uh, first time fighting in Canada since last September, I think, and also your first time fighting in Toronto. What does it mean to be competing back in your home country? Oh, it's great to be here. Uh, you know what? We pushed hard for it. Um, you know, every couple of weeks we'll send out, okay, can we get on this card? And uh, it shaped up, and it shaped up quite a bit in advance too. So. I got another full training camp, you know, not every fighter is that lucky to get, I think it was about nine weeks, you know, to prepare for it, so um, I'm very fortunate there, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting to be on not only a big herd, but a big herd in Canada. In your debut, your yeah. girlfriend uh, wasn't able to be there because she had a fight coming up, she's a fellow fighter as well, what does it mean to have her during fight week and just maybe calming those nerves or anything else? 
You know, it's great to have her uh, fight week. Um, you know, to me, I like keep fight week fun, as much fun as you can. You know, these interviews are exciting to me. Um, maybe there'll come a day when it's not, but for right now, I, I, I love being here and I don't see it changing. And uh, in terms of having her here, that means we can go walk around, we can go to the mall and just be just be normal people, you know. It, it, I, I don't like obsessing about, you know, the fight all fight week, you know. I, when the nerves come, you deal with them, you think about them, and then after that, it's just relaxing and enjoying yourself. That's what I did last time in Vegas. This time, I get to explore Toronto with my girlfriend. So, uh, you know, it's almost like a small holiday before before you fight. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Brad.